Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Dishonored. Uh, when last we left off, we were cleaning up the Pendletons. Oh yeah, I think we can open this door now, right? I keep wanting these to be whiskey because I just played Bioshock. Oh yeah, I did open this door. Whoops! That's okay, I've got a bajillion, um, tonic juices. The fact that these are like, these only have one half, like, boob, huh? is so, like, unusual, you know? Like, is it meant to be like a, like a... Nice. That was pretty clean. Is it meant to be like an art piece? Like a, like a think piece about how like... This place is a shitty brothel, obviously. This is a bad place to work. Luckily, this is the kind of light fixture that can take the weight of a 200 pound man and all of the stuff in his pockets. Granted, all of these are magic. And then this is a crossbow that's really light. Like a, like a, what's that crossbow? The little Joe, I think. It's just the name of a type of crossbow used in World War II. Yes, really. Um, and then the pistol and the sword and the heart and some grenades. Yeah, all things considered, I guess I don't really have a lot of stuff on me. So I probably don't weigh much more than like 200 pounds. Again, Corvo might be, like, huge, so maybe he's, like, 240 pounds just with pure muscle. Found out where Custis is. And Mr. Bunting, the art dealer. We'll deal with him. I like that Pietro uh, invented this, like, snake oil as a way to compete with, you know, this thing that, um, like, let's be honest, the red juice, Sokolov's formula or whatever the hell it's called, it does, in fact, fix you really good. Like, no wonder people are drinking it. Because I got shot and I drank some formula and then I wasn't shot anymore. I didn't have a gaping hole in my chest. I was fine. You know, and like one sip of it is like the equivalent of like... Again, I don't know how the eating system works in this game. I don't know if like Corvo is literally turning food into... Hey, we rescued Emily. Uh, but we'll skip that. Um... I don't know if Corvo is, like, literally turning food into health and, like, the more he eats, the less he, the, the more he can get shot. Like, in fiction, I don't know what that's meant to be. Um, I, you know, assume that it's meant to just be, like, a... Oh, I just drawing a little thing. That's so, like, the kind of thing that I would draw as a kid. Um, yeah. This is, like, pretty high-quality stuff. I like how the, like, these identical twins have different faces and proportions in this picture. Though I will say, it is such an easy, simple out to say, oh, they're identical twins, don't worry about it. And then to just, you know, duplicate the character model. But they didn't do that, which is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Anyway, the thing that I was saying about that is that, like, I wonder if it is an intentional thing where, like... They actually have a, uh... Clockwork malfunction. Interesting. One of those clockwork grenades. You know the time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wonder if it's meant to be like a a, a thing where like symbolically this place is a crappy brothel that beats its girls and you know lets the guys get away with too much. I wonder if it is a, a art piece, like a like an intentional statement that these women have been cut in half and they're faceless. Or if, like, they just couldn't model all that boob. I don't know what. Alright, it's one of the best sequences in the game. I've been like this for 20 minutes. Your footsteps sound a little loud. Have you gained a little weight, honey? Not just like last time, understand? Slowly. And only trigger the sh- my command. Get it? And the safe word tonight will be retribution, let's say. You hear that, you stop. One shock out of line, and you are out of a job. Oh, oh. oh that's good. I deserve that one. Shall I tell you why? The Pendletons are here, right? Start with them. I cheated them, robbed them of thousands. Oh. <laughs> Ruthless. Don't hold back. I'll tell you everything. The Pendleton's inheritance was worth hundreds of thousands at least. I told them it was junk. So that's why the Pendletons are like so aggressive of businesses. Uh, uh, retribution. Retribution. Uh, because um but it's all I can take. Yeah, he he screwed them out of out of a whole bunch of money and so in order to maintain the expensive life that they have uh They've had to get really, really aggressive with it. I think we can read his mind or Yeah. He's wealthy and wears fine clothing. But underneath, all men look the same. Very gooey underneath. A lot of red in there. He is low born. He is still more than wants to keep it a secret. Interesting. They ship him in from farming villages. Oh, this is just a generic thing about the golden cat. The brothel, that is. Man, I never looked at these walls. These are, like, super scary-looking walls. Uh, And then the curtains kind of... This is such a weird room. It's so austere. I guess it works for the thing, though. Anyway. We'll really juice him here. Oh, it actually has a safety on there. That's interesting. What the? Who is this? What do you want? What's the combination of your safe? The safe, yes, of course. The combination is one, three, eight. Take anything you find. I think I felt my heart skip. I mean, of course, it is a bit extravagant to have like an erotic electrocution machine. The fact that it has a safety so you can't just keep juicing the guy is pretty good, but for a guy who's getting up there in age. Please, my heart won't take this. Ask me anything. I screwed the Pendletons, yes, and, and I've been to the Brimsleys. They worship the outsider. I've seen it. I did it too. Man, you are playing with fire if you have a heart problem. And you are into <laughs> erotic electrocution. I guess this is electrifying until I pull this lever. At which point it becomes electrocution. Is he dead? Let's make sure of it. Alright, well. Um Come on now. Okay, I'm exposed on the floor here. Is there a next one? They don't know I'm here. I'd go fight him myself. If I weren't so valuable. Yes, my lord. Here you are. It's clever that I didn't call him. Turn the whole party down. The entire state depends on me. No, I'll wait until the guards take care of it. I could do it though. Oh. 
<laughs> you can see that he's a bit more full of piss and vinegar. Um, which I guess befits his, like, like persona, his character. Because, like, he's talking about how, like, yeah, I could, get, I, could, I, could, I could be a contender if I wanted to. I just don't, you know? Check this out. I could do a five-foot box jump. I just don't feel like it. Um... So it's interesting that, like, he, like, claws at you aggressively, and, like, you almost have to sideswipe him because... Oop, that wasn't meant to do that. Uh, you almost have to, like, sideswipe him with the, the, the sword because... Like, that's the only way for you to, to What's going on? get in on him. Um, so what you're meant to do is, there's a thing where, um, Slackjaw, that guy we iced, uh, yeah, Slackjaw, basically, says, hey, this dude is something that I want. Get it for me, and then we can make your problem go away. How about it? Um, I was talking about this earlier, and then I totally distracted myself, as I'm want and known to do. Uh, but basically... If we get that art dealer's um, stuff, which I believe is in here, if I remember right. You saw like a lot of blood, really. Wish I saw. Not a big deal. Maybe you can go up later and take a look. That twang is insistent. What do you say this was? One three eight. One moment. I'm just going to Google this because it's going to. See if we can go find his office. Really? Oh, God. All right, sorry. Just really wanted to get that. Um... So yeah, the Pendletons legalized slavery and made it so that, like, yes, you can enslave people. Which is obviously not cool, but... What you can do if you make nice with Slackjaw... is you basically... Right. I 
could have done that myself earlier. Uh, if you make nice with Slackjaw, basically... You're just like... Hey, I got a problem. Can you fix it? And he's like, can you fix my problem? And if you can... Oh, wait. I think this might be a loot. No, it's not. Bull rat. Um, yeah, he's like, I, I got a problem. I need the contents of that safe. I know a guy what knows it. If you can get that for me, I'll help you with your problem. Stop. Oh man. Hey, my head came off. That's why that's what happens when you roll like that. I was trying to get in aggressive enough to um I love that he, like, he hadn't even fallen over. So I think also that guy who is here the last time we were here, he will be gone because he will either have become a weeper or we, he will have to have fled. Nope, never mind. He's right here. Want to look at some of the things I've found? Good prices, I swear. Um, anyway, so what happens to the Pendletons is that Slackjaw gets a hold of them and then he strips them, shaves their heads, uh, cuts their tongues out. Makes it, you know, impossible for them to wait to be identified or found. And then uh, he puts them to work in their own mind, where they will presumably work until they die. Due to criminal activity near Holger Square, the area is now... The thing is, is that... Oh, this is our deal. Right, okay, doy. Don't mind me, guys. Um... Self-portrait by Anton Sokolov. This was... Oh, actually, um, I skipped the intro this time around. But in the intro, you can see Sokolov painting. Sokolov is the guy who invented that red elixir. Pietro is our inventor, and he invented the blue elixir. Uh, which I find very funny. Um, I was talking about that earlier, but I will get to that in a bit. Actually, let me swap over to OBS again. Okay. Um Come on, still. One more try. They wouldn't have such a strong door unless they kept some interesting. Uh, Somebody give me a hand. All right. Yeah. But yeah, ordinarily I never even saw this in the in the normal LP uh that I did with uh my wife. Because, Golden Cat's reopening. Because what you're kind of meant to do is give the code to Slackjaw. And he says, all right, we'll solve your problem for you then. And then he, you know, enslaves them, and puts them to work in their own mind. Hey, that's funny. I got an invo I got an invitation to the boil party.
I got that early as well. Yeah. Normally I'm given one later. I didn't know you could do that. That's really interesting. I'd like to mention that this is Custis Morgan and the Postulate Child, so... The two rich brothers and then the other one, the, you know, crap brother who works with me. And one of the things from the Golden Cat, because they all love that place. All three of them. If you recall, um, Sammy makes reference to the fact that, uh, he has taken... Trevor, I think? Trevor Pendleton? He has taken Trevor there. Trying to get a drop attack. Yeah, raddies. Anyone? No. Okay. Man, I might solve some more problems if I, uh,. Still full on bullets. I gotta start using more. Damn. Um, I might solve uh, some more problems if I started to, like. Maybe not, like. No, I've got I've got hack things. I should use more hacks. Attention, Dunwall. Um, so anyway, Sokolov invented Sokolov's marvelous drink concoction or whatever it's called. Um, I forget the exact name of it, but it's just it's literally the red potion. You know, the health potion. Um, and it succeeds in, you know, healing you. And the fact that he invented that is marvelous. And then Pietro, you know, just literally trying to compete with that, made his own thing uh, that he says is a spiritual elixir that gives you more spirit, you know? And the thing is, is that he didn't... I don't think he knew that it actually worked. I think he was just trying to imitate Sokolov's formula. And, you know, whether or not that succeeded was irrelevant to him. He just wanted to make a competitor. He wanted to make something that, you know, might be able to make him some money. Because Sokolov made a whole bunch of money with his. And, like, it's because Sokolov's works... And I imagine that the plan was, like, he would make something of perceived equivalent power. And in doing so... They thought they would be working in a factory. By the time they arrive, it's much too late. Yeah, see, I'm all for brothels. I'm all for, like, people saying, you know what? I will be a, a, a hooker for a career. But, like, when you literally, like, trick people into working at one, that's unethical. It's, a, it's unethical to trick anyone into working anywhere, really. Sorry, I'm just here to loot the place. I know that that seems bad, but... And look, they don't even clean the toilets. Like, there's a... St I forget where this originates. I want to say, like, World War II. Because there were a lot of American soldiers who spent time in French brothels. And I, I think I remember this. Because this was, like, where the Americans discovered what a bidet was. The door is locked. Unlock it so we can get away from this. This place. There you go. Um... Yeah, I think this originates from, like... Spain, or, or either Spain or France, but like, yeah, France, because it's World War II. Um, but American soldiers hanging out in France would only have encountered the bidet in French bathrooms. And only through, um, I'm just going to leave that. I'm, I, I don't think I'll be able to get it, so whatever. Uh, and so, like, the, the bidet, like, 
got this reputation as being like a brothel thing, even though it isn't. Just because, you know, they only saw it in brothels, you know? This is the joke that I'm very fond of, where somebody's like, talking about how they got serious, um... Yeah, I love... Sorry, let me get, let me get on topic. Somebody's talking about how they, they saw, like, uh, Invincible and they got big Man of Steel vibes from it. But what they're really describing is just guys who can fly and punch at the same time. That's, that's the vibes they're talking about. Somebody's like, guy who's only seen one movie. Wow, getting real Boss Baby vibes from this movie. That amuses me. Um, and so, like, American soldiers see a bidet and they're like, wow. Just like in the brothels. Like, they exist everywhere in France, actually. But the only time you went inside to take a shit was at a brothel, I guess. Americans, right? So I love that, like, there's this really early thing of, like, who is this guy he's murdering? I don't even know if this poster shows up if you're not a, a, a crazed murderer. But then this is a wanted poster about specifically Corvo masked. Not about Corvo, you know, in general, because that's a different bounty. And that has his face on it. Um, I like the idea that, like, they have a wanted poster of me, but honestly, I don't know who has seen my face well enough to make a poster about it. Like, I'm pretty sure I've just been knifing everyone. I don't think enough people have seen me to know what I look like, to know what the mask looks like, you know? Certainly for such an accurate sketch. Anyway, yeah, you would expect a brothel to have clean bathrooms, and there's, like, a... A stereotype about it, and like the fact that they charge so well. You to go back, Corvo. You made short work of things. Get in. Yeah. Um. Faceless. I don't even know what that is. Steamed a Pendleton to death. Nice. Ninety-four people killed. <laughs> Hoga. Yeah, you go to a brothel and it's dirty and like, God. I'm not one to speak against my betters, mind you, but if anybody ever deserved their fate, it was those Pendletons. What business are you talking about? Oh, I, uh, grown-up business, girl. I mean, your ladyship. Forgive me. It's okay. I heard a lot of grown-up business at the Golden Cat. Oh, I should concentrate on piloting this boat. Yeah, the, that specific verbiage, grown-up business at the Golden Cat, strictly speaking, does not have to be, but I would imagine refers to sex work. And so Corvo, Sammy saying, like, you sure did some good adult business with those, with those dirty Pendletons, Corvo. And, and she's like, oh, I've heard of this, yes. What does she think Corvo did? Pleased to meet you. As am I. Would you like to see your room in the tower? Can I see it? Yes. You like, obviously, there is a, a, you know, a lot of talk about murder and killing at the, at the Golden Cat that they talked about. I like it here. I'll go with Callista Corvo. I'll see you later. And she could have heard about murder through that, but the idea that she, <laughs> that she assumes that Corvo is like, I don't know, fucking people to death. That's funny. That amuses me. So this is something that I really like, um, and it's something that they talk about a little bit in Assassin's Creed. In Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the the Assassin's Creed that takes place in um, the Assassin's Creed that takes place in uh, Industrial Revolution Britain, which is obviously the closest analog to this. Um, the assassins just like straight up kill everyone. They just kill everyone involved. Ask me for any gear you need. Um, and the thing is, is that that actually throws the city into chaos because just saying, okay, we'll just kill everyone means that there's nobody to like clean toilets because you killed the toilet cleaner, you know, and maybe not literally that, but now there's nobody who can kill or that now there's because you've killed him. Now there's nobody who can, um, you know, make sure that the trains run on time because you killed that guy. And sure, he was corrupt. You still killed him though. Didn't have to do that. Um. 
Yeah. I think this is just a shortcut. Like, I literally don't think this leads anywhere. Yeah. Um... Sorry, I want to get up here. Or maybe there's a smarter way to do that. Um, but one thing that Ezio does in Assassin's Creed 2 and a couple of the other games is that when they kill somebody, they have their own guy ready to go. So like Ezio like kills somebody in charge of a brothel because they're corrupt. And then he has his sister be in charge of it. Or like kill somebody in charge... I forget who he kills in, in Brotherhood. But he kills somebody in Brotherhood and... Um, he has his mom take over, or like the Machiavelli takes over, or somebody, you know? And the thing is, is that like when you kill, you know, everyone, then society breaks down because everyone's dead. Like, of course, that's how that works. I love the shantytown construction, but I don't know if it actually makes sense. Why wouldn't they just have a way to get up here? I don't want to look around right now. Of course. We can give you the tour later. And but look, they have this this is something I actually like. They have a nice little place for Emily to hang out in. And Callista will hang out here. They have books for her to read, they have dolls. These are those creepy doll assets that they used from earlier. She did not survive. Oh. Um a train of carriages rode through the city. But yeah, I like the I, I, like I love the idea of like okay, I killed this guy, but I have my own fresh replacement ready to go. Don't worry, you know. So we killed his brothers. He didn't really want us to do that. Hello. The loyalist conspiracy thanks you for your work. I don't know if I can. My own brothers. We never believed that you killed the Empress. It made much more sense that the royal spy master, now the Lord Regent, was behind it, aided by some of his. So this dialogue naturally changes. We spent a lot of money and exposed ourselves to great risk in getting you out of prison. Uh, this dialogue naturally changes if you leave his brothers alive. He's like, okay, I know you did some screwed up stuff, but thank you for leaving them alive. But he's like, mm. Where's Wallace? Wallace, you're promoted wherever you are. But yeah, like, it's, it's funny. We literally have a spare Pendleton ready to go. Like, oh, Morgan and Custis Penny were killed? Well, luckily for you, Trevor Pendleton's here to take over. We can resume things as normal. Don't worry about it. All good. Um, and like... I think we might need to possess something and literally go in there. And that's how you get that last charm. Other pause. Yeah, I have no interest in shadow kill. Agility is really good. Oh man, Corvo's great. I really love Corvo's moveset. It is a difficult time for the family. Perhaps we should not speak. I forget what Wallace's relation is, but... Um, All right, my friend. he does make, uh, uh, he is made reference to, but yeah, so he's going to be the new head cop or whatever, or the new head regent, Lord Regent, and he's going to be the new overseer. So, uh, the theocratic police and the police police. So going to skip this cause whatever. Uh, oh, that should probably be the episode though. Um, I've been Alfred. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed. I know I did. Um, this episode's great. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys next time, though. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.